An unusual square structure on Mars? What's up with that? Uh, let's go back in time a bit. Towards the end of the 1990s, we wanted better data, primarily to help us judge where future landing sites should be once we understood the geology and the seasonal changes and this sort of thing. So we launched a Mars probe called the Mars Global Surveyor, MGS, back in 1996, 97, around there. Mars Global Surveyor was launched to enter Mars orbit pole to pole. And when you enter a polar orbit, it gives you certain advantages if you have a camera with you. So as you orbit the planet, the planet rotates inside of your orbit. So every time you come around the backside, there's a new strip for you to photograph. And you come around, there's a strip over here, it turns some more, another strip. And you keep doing this and you mosaic all the strips together in high resolution imagery. So this missions such as that are what's responsible when we do photo reconnaissance of objects, planets, moons, asteroids that we intend to visit. There's scads of data that came back from Mars Global Surveyor. Well, every now and then, somebody finds a feature. Someone discovered a structure that looks like a square that has a little, a little sort of sharp right angle to it. Well, that's, that's interesting, okay? The enhanced images puts sort of extra sharp edges in there and completes an entire square. The enhanced images really help you think it's something other than a natural formation. So let me stick to the original image here. What could it be? You don't see many right angles in nature. No, not at all. Especially a surface subject to asteroid strikes, most ridges you will see are arced. That's what's most common, okay. But Mars has very real evidence of running water in the past, for example. And water can carve ridges and rills that can be round or can be straight. If I remember correctly, Mars has the same land area as Earth, okay? So in other words, if you take the, the land area of Earth, you can clad the entire surface of Mars with it. So now you can ask, if I had that much surface area to pour over, what kinds of things might I see? Let's go back to 1976. Oh my gosh, one of the earlier reconnaissance satellites saw something that looked like a face, a simian face, the kind of face you find in the ape branch of the tree of life. People said, life on Mars, oh my gosh, because there's a nose, eye sockets, cheekbones, uh, they, uh, oval head. You found it because we are trained to see faces even if there's not a face. This is what we do. It's what we can do. In fact, there's a word for it, pareidolia. Oh, by the way, multiple images of that same region, you don't see a face. And you can see kind of what we might have thought were the eye sockets and the cheekbones. There were people who were believers who said, oh, the Martians knew we were looking at them, and they quickly went in and brushed some dust onto it to cover it up. Maybe that's exactly what the Martians did. Maybe. If that's your proclivity, I, I, I don't want to stop you, but you should know you're going to be wrong nearly 100% of the time. But the day you're right, that'll be great. But I don't have the luxury of being wrong 99.999% of the time. But let's keep going. There's a crater that looks like a valentine. There's another one that has like a, a smile, a, a mouth and two eyes, the yellow smiley face from the 1970s. We got one of those on Mars. Oh, another thing someone noticed was on Mars, there's like a little structure and it looked like some dude was just chilling, sitting on the rock. He does kind of look a little like Bigfoot, doesn't he? Uh, well, how do I know what Bigfoot looks like? Well, there's this one video of Bigfoot uh, from the 1960s. You'd think if an oversized ape-like mammal were running around the forest, we'd have better data than fuzzy video from the 1960s. One of my favorite jokes from the comedian Mitch Hedberg, rest in peace, was suppose Bigfoot is actually fuzzy. <laughs> so you can't get a sharp picture of him. <laughs> but then you realize this structure that everyone is analyzing is, you know, it's a few inches tall. It's like a 
the remnants of what dust carved in the rocks. And it reminds me a little bit of the man in the mountain in New Hampshire. And I visited that when I was a kid. It was, I thought it was pretty cool. I think parts of him have fall, fallen off or something. Uh, he, he broke. <laughs> but again, we're looking for faces. Humans are extraordinary at pattern recognition. We recognize patterns when there aren't any there at all. And how do I know? Because you can lay down dots at random on a page with a random number generator. And then at some point you say, what do you see? Oh, I see a face or I see a, a cliff or I see a this. Of all the things on Mars, there are ridges. Now two of the ridges are at a right angle. If you have enough ridges, two of them are gonna end up at a right angle at some point. You're not pointing out to me the ones that are at a 45 degree angle, because 45 degrees is not special to you. Or at an obtuse angle, all right, or at any other, there's the 90 degree. That's the special one from geometry class. Maybe it is indeed an excavation site on Mars. Okay. Or maybe it's not. Interesting to me, psychologically, how potent the urge is to encounter something you can't otherwise explain and say, aliens must have done it. I I'm intrigued by that. Just not only as a scientist, but just as a human. And I just wonder what psychologists say about this. This urge to believe. That's the cost of being human, I suppose. It makes life interesting, actually. Maybe it stokes our imaginations, feeding landscape of storytellers. So, I, uh, people wanna go and hang out in that square? And by the way, look at the original image, please not the enhanced image. Uh, I don't have any problem going back, it's interesting. I'm not saying it's not interesting. If next time we have a lander, if there's compelling reason to go there instead of someplace else where we might find evidence for life, because that's a strong compelling force operating on our ambitions and NASA when we every time we go to Mars. But you wanna go and investigate geometric structures? Like, okay, maybe we can fold that into a mission. Anyhow, enough on that subject. And that's what's up with that. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Four Star Talk, as always. Keep looking up. Our brains love turning randomness into recognizable patterns and shapes, like seeing a square structure on Mars. But instead of jumping to conclusions based on one viral post, why not see the full picture first? Some claim this could be proof of existence for aliens, while others simply point out it's a three kilometer wide square on the planet though some have called the shape wild. Getting context from different sources helps paint a clearer picture of what's really happening. So tracking developments through reliable sources these next four years is absolutely essential, something our long-term partners at Ground News simplify. They're an app and website founded by a former NASA engineer who brought the same level of precision she needed up in space to how we consume information here on Earth access every perspective shaping a story with data on how credible their reporting actually is. Or burst your media bubble and find important angles impacting space and beyond you might have otherwise missed. With science increasingly becoming a political talking point these days, access to a platform designed to bring clarity to even the most polarizing topics has never been more important. So head to ground.news slash startalk or Scan the QR code to subscribe to Ground News today. We're giving our viewers 40% off their top tier Vantage plan, knocking the price down to $5 a month. The decisions made in the coming years could profoundly shape the future of space exploration and more. So we really can't recommend enough finding clarity through Ground News.